Hey, I'm uh, Graham Malcolm and I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder at M Squared Lasers. At M Squared, we are, uh, we're on a journey to innovate in photonics and quantum technologies. And uh, we're really concentrating in, in three main technology areas. Quantum technologies, biophotonics and chemical sensing using laser technology. We're focusing on those three markets because uh, we see that each of them has got the potential to scale. Um, quantum technologies has been uh, a research theme for maybe the last five years and in many ways, but it goes back longer when you include atomic and molecular optics. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, research interest in that theme. Uh, it's probably the sort of uh, area that's going to take some time to, uh, to evolve and scale uh, and actually make it into uh, more industrial and consumer products. Uh, on biophotonics, uh, we're a bit further down the road on that, on that technology, so uh, imaging using uh, laser, laser microscopes has been around for quite a long time. We're now starting to see diagnostics using uh, laser technology for fingerprinting uh, and, uh, and also an increasing number of therapies. So uh, biophotonics, life sciences is a, a, again an important growth area. Uh, and the final area of, uh, of uh, chemical sensing using lasers is an area that we've been pioneering at M squared. So uh, that's an area where uh, we'll replace existing technologies. So I, th I guess the common theme is that we're looking for areas that can be really quite disruptive and, and, uh, and where the technology can actually make a change to the end uses and applications so that we get uh, some strong markets there. But M squared, we wanted to kind of pioneer some new approaches and uh, kind of Key one there has really been that 80% of what we do is about products and 20% is about innovation. So that's about looking for technology that's going to address uh, applications that are maybe five or ten years uh, down the road. So we've got this uh, nice balanced team of guys that are kind of developing uh, our, cust our current products, trying to aim for what we call dependable innovation at M squared. We want our, our lasers to come out and to be useful in new applications from day one. We don't want to have to go through lots of iterations on the path to taking a new application to market. Then on the innovation side, what we do a lot of is, uh, is collaborate. So we've, uh, we've run over 150 collaborations over those, uh, those 10 years uh, all over the world. Uh, and that's given us a great network of uh, kind of fellow technologists and scientists that really give us a, a kind of backstage pass into, into where these technologies are going and where the applications of the future might be. Um, what we've seen is that uh, the, the research base is a, is a great place for us to kind of collaborate. So we do a lot of collaboration at M squared. And that kind of gives you the signpost to where these future industries are going to come from. So uh, quantum is just on that cusp of, you know, within the next five years, we'll have some real uh, sensors, uh, uh, computing elements associated with quantum. So there'll be some real breakthroughs in that area. Um, but in bio and, uh, and the chemical sensing, as you say, we're already in the journey towards those things moving from the research themes into, uh, uh, into for example, uh, in hospitals, into uh, replacing areas like pathology or uh, in chemical sensing, starting to create sensors that, that can replace uh, previous technologies in uh, maybe oil and gas or defence and security. Photonics has become more 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 well known, but it's been a it's been a hard journey to kind of make sure that I guess in many ways photonics is it underpins and enables many uh, uh, many applications and you know everything from cell phones to the internet, but not not everybody realises that it's kind of that hidden technology there, and that, that's, that's the same story here as it is in the uh, in the UK. But what we what we've got better at is is getting that message out there and forward. So in the UK now. Uh, Photonics employs more people than Big Pharma. Uh, it's in many, many more companies, but that kind of employment uh, model is now recognised by government and it's understood. Uh, similarly, you know, as Photonics maybe moves into quantum technologies for the future, the importance of these new technologies is, is now starting to get recognised much earlier uh, in our cycle in the in the UK. So, uh, I, I'd say that actually only only two weeks ago uh, in the Houses of Commons. In our, in our UK Parliament, there was a debate on photonics, and that's one of the first debates that's been uh, primarily addressed to photonics in, uh, in uh, policy making in the UK. There's some differences and some contrasts in the, between the UK and the US, and 
uh, you know, it's important for us that we actually work in, work in both environments. So we, we adapt to the, the local environment as best we can. But what I'd say is in the, in the UK, um, there's been a, a, a real uh, step forward in the last 10 years where uh, the, the kind of the, the global lead that the US has had in innovation is now really uh, over the over the last 10 maybe even 20 years started to be adopted in the in the UK so I guess we've got areas like Cambridge that are uh, rich in technology we've got a, a, a very very kind of rich uh, science base in the UK so uh, many of the world's leading sci scientists are, are based in the UK what we've been not so good at is dovetailing that into how we get into technologies and and take those forward. Um, but I'd say that whole ecosystem has really uh, stepped up a lot in the in the last 10, but particularly the last five years. So um, maybe the, the, the lead on some of that has been on, on things like the, the digital area, where London has become a, a centre for digital technologies. Uh, the mix of, uh, of finance and the city of London and technologies kind of close to that have really driven some, uh, uh, some really high growth startups and scale-ups uh, in London. And what I'd say is that's moving into areas like ours where there's more deep science uh, behind the technologies. So uh, a lot of government support over the last uh, five years to really, I guess, take stock and say where are our, where are our future emerging uh, industries going to come from, uh, and, and how do we uh, how do we make better use of that uh, superb science base that we have in the in the UK? M squared is is quite kind of important to us that we've got this. You know, product and applications focus, but also a technology focus. And I think you kind of need the yin and the yang of these things to, to kind of pull together. So, uh, you know, often our job is to uh, is to get that kind of insight into the technology by working with the science base. That really, you know, science is the kind of it's the the road sign to the future. But we're also very conscious that we need to be working with customers and markets that have have real problems. And it's when we get those two things to to interlock uh, that we have the we have the most success. So um, I, I think for us it's a it's a kind of make sure these things meld together, uh, and that we're constantly on the drive to bring great new technologies forward. But we're also looking at where they fit, and listening uh, listening is probably one of the keywords to to customers and end users about where they have uh, important problems that we can help them with.